Hello, everybody, and thank you so much for joining me today. I am Jim Coppinger with Zen Tech Consultants, and today I want to talk to you guys about how easy it is to work with punch lists in Bluebeam Review. Um, so before we get into the presentation, just a few uh, quick housekeeping items. Uh, because it's a public forum, I do keep all of microphones and telephones for all of the attendees muted. Um, but if you guys take a look at your GoTo panel, you're, you'll see that there's a question box and a chat box, and you guys can just type questions in as we go through. Uh, I'm not going to take, I'm not going to pause to answer those in real time, but I have allowed a little space at the end of the presentation today where I'll go back and answer any questions that you guys might have. Okay. So with that said, let's go ahead and get into today's presentation. Um, so for starters, for those of you who haven't worked with us before, we're Zentech Consultants and we are a premier Bluebeam partner, uh, but we do quite a lot more than that. We're also certified Microsoft providers. We work with just about all the technology from CAD and design up through advanced BIM modeling, et cetera, um, and you know, uh, communication collaboration, really any technology that you have in the AEC or manufacturing spaces, chances are we can help you with it. So we hope you guys will hit our website and see all the good fun things we offer for you. All right. so. Today, like I said, we're talking about punch lists, and you can call them punch lists, you can call them walkthroughs, you can call them closeouts, uh, final inspections. I've heard them called a million things, right? It all comes down to uh, finding the issues before you, you, you finalize payment and close out a, a construction project. Um, and, and it's really one of those things that's been very time consuming and, and frustrating for us all to handle for <laughs> literally forever. Um, because what invariably winds up happening is that somebody has to walk through with a set of drawings and they take a pen and they make little circles and notations on every problem throughout the entire setup and then they have to translate those somehow, whether it's by a phone call or email or a formal report, to the people who are going to re be responsible for handling that, right? So the bouncing back and forth and between the offices and trying to associate photos and so on can be really time consuming. And that's where moving to an electronic platform like Bluebeam, where people will be able to go out and actually handle the punch list structure, right, in real time, in the office, right from their laptops or their, their uh, tablets or whatever they happen to be working with, right, can have a dramatic impact on your time, your frustration, and your bottom line. So with that said, I'm just going to go through and give you guys just kind of a, a simple demo of what we can do in Bluebeam, a few of the tools that kind of associate around the punch list process. So like I said that you know, the first benefit is that everything you're going to work with here is a PDF. So the things that we're going to show here today on the class, you know, your uh, site inspectors, your field inspectors, whoever's doing the walkthroughs, uh, they can just do this, like I said, on, on a laptop, a two-in-one, a tablet, whatever they have. No problem. Do it on their iPads. It all works just fine. And what's great about this is that Bluebeam is fully integrated into Bluebeam Studio, right? Which means that these files and I'm just going to real quick sign in here into Bluebeam Studio. These files can actually be hosted on Bluebeam Studio so that they're accessible to anybody anywhere in the world with an internet connection. You can even do it through a basic cell phone structure, right? It's, it's not a, a, an overly difficult kind of concept to set up and work with here. So you see that you can go in, you can build entire projects out here, okay? And then from within those projects, your, your folks out in the field, they can just go ahead and they can just open up, right? check out, work on, and modify any of these plans. So if they have to go in and they have to work on, you know, a particular site plan, right, they can just go ahead and open that up, right, open up that, that plan and start putting in all of their markups and comments and whatever it is they need to do, okay? So, and the, the really, really important thing about this is that once you get into working in Bluebeam Studio, right, uh, I'm just going to undo that check. I'm not really concerned about saving that one, is that we can actually take these files into um, a, blue, a, a Bluebeam Studio session, right? Which means that you can have up to 500 people at a time viewing and modifying these files at the same time. So think about what that means. That means that while your construction engineer or your, your project manager, whoever's doing the walkthrough is going through this building and he's tagging issues and problems, you, the architect, the owner, all in three different offices, one in Tokyo, one in Australia, one here in the States, can all be watching and discussing and seeing in real time where the problems are and resolving, right? And assigning who's gonna you know, fix those issues or what the problems were in real time from the field as that's happening, which is a really, really important thing. And, and even that just kind of to, to go along beyond that, if you have multiple people out in the field 
who are doing this. They can they can log in one guy on the first floor, one guy on the second floor, and they can see each other's progress as people are marking comments and issues as they're you know kind of walking back and forth through the building doing their final walkthrough. They can see you know where's the other guy, where's he you know what's he gotten done, is he finished? Can I go down and help him? Right, a lot of benefits to working this out in the field. Right, so that's that integration with Bluebeam Studio that you can get. Right. So what I want to talk about here today is, is using some of the out-of-the-box um, punch list symbols. Because when Bluebeam ships, it comes with a number of predefined tools for different issues, right? Very easy, simple things to do, right? So if we go and say, look, maybe we got some, some basic uh, carpentry issues. Right? And you can see that what I've got here are a series of punch keys, just simple, basic punch keys, right? That you can go in and you can actually start. You see they've already got a comment associated with them. It's a symbol. So if I go in and say, all right, you know, I'm walking through the building. Right, and I'm down here, and there's a problem with the wall finish in this area. All I have to do is just come over in Bluebeam and just drop that comment. Okay. Now, what's nice about this is that here in Bluebeam, I can also have it set up and enabled to be able to, to repeat it. So I can continue to say if there's the same problem over here and the same problem over here. Right. And you see that I've already got those set. Right? And if you look in the Bluebeam markup set, you see that it's actually giving me all the comments. Not just the symbol, but it's actually giving me the list of the wall finish, not smooth repair on each of these items. Okay, so then I can go in and add other ones. Maybe you've got some uh, millwork issues over here. Okay, and I can drop that comment. And again, people can be watching me drop this in real time. You see, I'm getting all the different comments and notifications about what the problem is, just using some predefined punch keys wherever there are issues. Now, that's great and it works phenomenally well, right? but the truth is that sometimes there are odd. Or different issues right maybe this is a wall finish not smooth repair but there's more information you want to put here okay so I need to modify this one I can go in after the fact and I can start to change and modify all the different components of this so you see here that in this one says uh, wall finish not smooth repair I can add to that right? I can also put in also a uh, hole in the jip board 12 inches front floor, okay? So I can add additional notes and you see those now show up right here in the general comments, right? And when I generate reports and output and so on, all of that's gonna be visible to everybody who's working with my punch list, right? I can even go in here underneath the, the punch list and if I wanna highlight that, you see I can actually expand out and I can modify the symbol or the text if I need it to look different. So maybe I wanna really pop that one out and I'm gonna set a background fill for yellow, okay, and I want that text, right? I can go in and modify the text and say, hey, let's, you know, I really want that text. I want it to be bold, and I'm gonna make it black so that it really stands out on top. So you say I can modify individual symbols that need to be highlighted and, and, and addressed, no problem, right? So it makes it very, very simple. I can even go in and I can totally change just by clicking on this. I can just change the, the tag, right? Instead of, you know, WR for, you know, uh, you know wall repair, right? Maybe I wanna put WH for wall hold. There you go, okay? Then I can actually go in and if this is a standard symbol, I can easily add this back into my tool chest so that it, that just becomes a, another reusable key that I can use on future projects, right? Very, very easy to work with that, right? So modifying these is a very, very simple thing, right? Now, one of the other things that's really important when you're dealing with, um, I'm just gonna close down this, this side panel here. Actually, no, you don't wanna leave that open. So you can also go in with basic punch keys. You can also add basic tools for things like call outs, things that are non-standard, okay? Right? Maybe you don't have one for a cracked window and you just wanted to put in a note, right? Cracked window, there you go. Just like that, a note already set, already labeled, right? Fonts to the conditions, layers, whatever type of controls and standards you wanna put in. Everybody can quickly go in with the sets of tools that you built here to, to modify whatever they need, right? So one of the things that you kind of look at this uh, background of the sample I have up here, notice I have these little different color coded areas. What I have here are different spaces that are built because what's important when you're doing a punch list or any kind of a walkthrough is not just being able to tell people what's wrong, you also have to let them know where is that wrong. Now it's very easy if they're looking in the PDF and they got everything all set up, not a problem. Right? But eventually, for some folks, you're going to have to go ahead and push this out to some kind of a report and an email and an Excel spreadsheet right, for different contractors to go in and repair things. So the question is, how do I tell them where things are? How do I tell them you know, which office this is? Well, 
all too often, right? If there's a problem up in this office on, on the left, I've got to spell out an email saying, okay, if you go uh, you know, into building 100 on the first floor, on the southwest corner, just beyond the last cubicle on the left, you know, this is the kind of communication nightmare that we all have to deal with on a daily basis. It's time consuming, it's problematic. Instead, and I'm just gonna very quickly, I'm just gonna delete the ones that I put in here, right? Instead, right, what I can do is I can define spaces inside Bluebeam. And that's what I've already done, all these different colored ideas here. You see that I've got different spaces, right? And if I go over here and look real quick in the space, you see I've got different, um, I've got my building, I've got different departments, I've got a marketing department, and then I have rooms already spelled out inside the marketing department. Okay. So now as your people in the field go out and they're doing the walkthrough and they're like, okay, you know what? Let's do some, some different stuff. Maybe I got some electrical issues, right? I got some switch problems going on in here, right? The switch is, is bad right there. Now I don't have to worry about it because look what it did. It's telling me that's in the marketing department in room 6050. If I had, you know, labeled this whole thing out here, right? As being, you know, building 100, it'd tell me it's in building 100 marketing department room 6050. I already know exactly where the issues are. And they're intelligent. As I move these, if I move this from room 6050 down to here, now it's in room 6048. All of your items that you create, all your punches are automatically being labeled as to where they are. Right? Really makes your life a lot easier. Now, while I'm down here looking at the, the markups, I'll just show you that one of the other things you can do is you can build and, and set your own custom columns to keep track of the information that you need. So in terms of something like punch list, it's very easy to assign responsible parties. So I built a custom column here that lets me go and say, who's gonna fix that, right? Is it the installer? Is it the trade? Or is it the GC? Who's responsible for fixing that issue, okay? You can customize those columns, put in literally anything that you need them to say. And you can build as many custom columns as you need if you need to set, you know, different columns for, you know, back charges and oversight and whatever else you need to work with. The other thing that I can do here is I can track statuses. So not only can I create this the first time out, I can keep track of what's been done, what's been repaired and what hasn't here inside of Bluebeam. Just by opening up the PDF, I can just go to this object and set a status. And you see, I can build my own custom punch list. Is it under dispute? And who said it to be disputed? Right? The GC is disputing that. Okay. Right? Then after that's resolved, right, you can come back and say, okay, it's pending. Right? And you can add comments in here. <clears throat> I can reply and say, okay, after review, GC will fix. Okay. Right? My typing's terrible. I apologize for that. But there you go. So now you see it, it comes in and I've got notes. Right? So I can keep the entire process. See, I actually even have it changing colors and, and setups as I change statuses. So I can keep track very easily of you know, where things reside just by visually looking at it. So there's a lot that you can really do here, okay? In terms of keeping track of what's going on there. Now, so that's a definite benefit, right? That you can keep track of all of this. One of the other things that I think is really, really important when you are dealing with, um, I'm gonna grab this exposed wires, maybe. I'm gonna go over here into this office and say, okay, you know, I got some exposed wires over here, okay, within this space. You know, they say, you know, a picture's worth a thousand words. Now in Bluebeam, you can insert base pictures, right? You can just go insert images and kind of put them out here and, and drag them all over, but that gets to be really messy and ugly. What's really nice, right, is that you can go right to a punch key like this, right click on it, right? And I can just go to capture. And if you're doing this in the field on your, on your tablet, you can just go right to the camera and take photos of that spot. Or if, if you're on a laptop or whatever and you've saved them or you save them from your cell phone, you can just add them from a file. So you see here, I'll go in, I'll say, okay, you know what, here, I've got a, a melted connection, okay? You see that that's now this little symbol icon? Now you can just click on that, there's your image, right? And if you wanna add more images, maybe I'm gonna bring in all of those, okay? Here, see they're all set. They're all nothing but this one single icon, but when you click on it, you see that now I've got five images and I can just work my way through all the images as they're related to that punch item, okay? Which is a really, really fantastic setup, right? And then like I said, when I'm done, I can actually go in, right? And I can generate, right? A PDF summary or a CSV summary or report, 
right? I can filter these down based on responsible party, spaces, right? Whatever status I'm working with, really anything. I can break and filter and build reports on anything. One of the things I like about this, one thing that I do a lot is I'll generate a PDF summary, right? And I'm gonna append it to the current PDF. This way I can kind of generate an in-place report and see that what it did for me is it added this page. Now I've only got two markups, but you can see that the markups have all of my information. Right? The subject, the label, who's responsible, what room it's in, what the, the current status is. Right? But what I like about this by appending it to this is that these are hyperlinked. So now when I send this to somebody, it's got both the plan and this in it. So we can go, okay, I'm responsible for this. What? Oh, here, that's where it is. Oh yeah, okay, we gotta go into that room. They know exactly what needs to be repaired and where there are issues. Right? And the great thing, like I said, I can go in, I can sort these by going into spaces, you know, I can see everything that's in any particular room. I can even filter things down. So if I want to go in and say, you know, let, let me, I'm going to assign some other, I'll say that's the trade contractor and this is the trade contractor. Now, if I have a long list of three or 400 items in a big job, I, I can easily with Bluebeam go in and say, look, just show me what the trade contractor is responsible for. Cool. This is all he has to do. Now I can just build a report just like I did before with this. I can build a report just for the trade contractor. Then I can just come back and say, okay, now let's do one for the GC. Here's everything the GC is responsible for. And I can go ahead and, and filter that, okay? So it's an easy enough thing to do where I can build these custom reports and work with it. And that's the real power behind working the punch list or final inspection site closeout inside of Bluebeam Review. There's just a lot of functionality. And really we've just kind of, you know, touched base on, on a little bit of what this can do for you, but you can see it's gonna dramatically reduce error uh, a lot of, you know, the communication time, you can access and collaborate from these. You can see field inspection happening in real time from the office to the field and back. It's just absolutely an amazing set of tools. So with that said, I think that covers what I wanted to talk to you guys about today. So I'm going to go back to my little presentation here and all right, take a look and see what kind of questions we have. All right. So it looks like I did get two questions in. Uh, so I got a question from Carlos. Uh, he wants to know, is Studio available for Bluebeam standard? Yes, uh, Bluebeam Studio is, is actually part of all Bluebeam licenses, Carlos. It's available in all versions, and if you have Bluebeam, you already own it. You just have to create yourself an account and start using it, okay? It really is that easy. You, you know, there's no additional fee, and it's unlimited storage, so you can host hundreds of, you know, gigabytes of data up there without any fees, okay? So, yeah, definitely. Um, and I have a question from Sharina. Um, can I build my own punch key symbols? Yeah, absolutely. That's it's just part of your tool chest, all right? Um, you have to know how to do it. There's a little bit to it. It's not overly difficult, but I'll be honest with you and tell you, Sharina, it, it can be a little time consuming building to your standards and building those from scratch. Uh, but I will throw out uh, that that is a service that Zentech offers. We actually can do that for you and we can build those lists to your specifications and your standards with your codes that your guys are used to using. Okay, so that's definitely something we can help you with. Um, and I think that answers all the questions. I don't see any other ones. So with that, I want to thank you guys for spending the time with us today. Um, I also hope you guys will take a minute and hit our website or hit the uh, uh, any of the local hosting services to see that we also generate here the Cattle Call podcast. It's all about CAD and construction services. We talk about Bluebeam and all of the latest software and applications and the digital side of the, the architecture, engineering, construction, manufacturing world. So hope you guys will uh, listen to that. All right. And as always, if you guys have any questions or concerns, just feel free to reach out to us at any contact info up here on screen. Uh, best and quickest way is just hit sales at zentechconsultants.net. Other than that, thank you guys for your time today and enjoy the rest. Bye-bye.